Co-chair, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to have the opportunity to talk to you here today. Uh, I've been working uh, with research on the living resources of the seas around Iceland for quite a long time, uh, including uh, having responsibility for uh, providing advice uh, on sustainable harvest of the resources in, in our waters. In such a short uh, presentation, uh, I might almost uh, like to go to the conclusion, my two points. But I would like to uh, reflect on the changing conditions in northern waters on the Arctic Ocean, where natural variability uh, can actually have even greater uh, impacts on the system uh, than uh, predicted global warming uh, effects. Uh, we need cooperation here. Uh, then I would like to reflect on uh, some dramatic shifts in distribution and abundance of uh, important fish stocks in, uh, in, uh, in northern waters, uh, where cooperation in gathering information has taken place, and quite successfully. Uh, I would like to dwell a little bit with the so-called pelagic complex in the North Atlantic, which is a uh, uh, which are three important pelagic uh, stocks, extremely valuable pelagic stocks that are shared among nations in the North Atlantic Ocean uh, and are subject for international uh, management uh, regime. We claim in Iceland that the seas around Iceland are a large-scale laboratory for studying impacts of climate variability on the living marine resources since Iceland is on the border of warm and cold sea currents, and where the sea surface temperature is ranging from below zero to 12, uh, 13 degrees. Also, uh, natural fluctuations uh, caused by non-human uh, variations in ocean conditions occur. And here we see how things have been developing uh, of Iceland, of northern Iceland, the last 140 years, with warm and cold periods. And these various, uh, variations are indeed more dramatic than the predicted increase in ocean temperature around Iceland the next century. So we have been uh, influenced by great uh, chances in uh, the modern environment around Iceland. And we have uh, made great efforts to try to explore and understand uh, the dynamics of these chances and uh, how they impact uh, the marine life in our waters. Uh, here you see uh, a graph showing um, a cruise uh, expedition that was conducted in August, September 2008. It's quite an expensive activity to send a vessel for a prolonged period of time to explore uh, the ocean around Iceland. And uh, when we think about uh, when we think about the, the huge Arctic area, which we need to understand and explore in the coming years, uh, a one vessel survey for one month or two months is, is a drop in, in, in the ocean. So, um, so uh, we need, uh, there's a strong need for coordinated effort in the Arctic Ocean and at the Asian seas in order to map and understand the ongoing chances dynamics of the system and future scenarios. This is a huge task which requires concerted action of the international community. And when we look at the tiny area around Iceland here shown in red and yellow, which represents one of the richest fishing grounds in the world, and then we look at the uh, Arctic areas which may be open for fisheries and, uh, and uh, activities in the future, uh, it is obvious that, uh, that uh, uh, this is a subject that is of great interest for, for, for human mankind, I would say. Um, just to look at the pelagic complex, which are the three species I mentioned earlier, uh, they are extremely valuable in the North Atlantic Ocean. They are extremely sensitive for uh, uh, temperature uh, variations. They simply move where the conditions are favorable. Um, and um, so they would be candidates to invade the Arctic seas. They are not restricted to the continental shelves like most of the demersal fish stocks. 
but obviously they need much food and uh, they compete each other. Here we see uh, first the, the, uh, the, the, the cablin, which is a cold water species, pelagic species, and then uh, the, the pelagic complex species, herring, blue whiting, and mackerel. So they cover a huge geographic range and compete. In the warm, uh, in, in the cold water uh, period, uh, say prior to 1995, uh, the total biomass of these three species was in the range of six to eight million metric ton, uh, tons, a million tons. Uh, one third to one half of what it has been in the most recent years when productivity has increased due to warming up in the North Atlantic Ocean. So there are great poten economic potentials in sustainable uh, future harvest of pelagic stocks and also, of course, in some demersal stocks in the high north. Uh, there has been successful cooperation in research of these resources, but more efforts are needed, obviously. The great displacement of North Atlantic resources in recent years will repeat itself in the Arctic in the future uh, for these and other species. But unfortunately, the cruel fact is that the civilized North Atlantic nations with economic strength and scientific knowledge are not able to manage these uh, um, important uh, resources in harmony. So uh, this is something that we need to look at because it will repeat itself in the Arctic. We have the same tasks to, to address in the future uh, when it comes to uh, expansion of uh, these stocks into the northern waters and Arctic seas. Just to mention one uh, additional stock, which is the cold water species, uh, Cablin. It will invade to the northern more waters if uh, things will develop as we envisage. Um, and just to make my Google friend happy, this is a map showing the distribution, the past distribution of, of, of the Cablin, Iceland, uh, Greenland, uh, Cablin stock uh, in the 1990s. It, and the, how the stock has been moving to west and north uh, in the most recent years due to the warming up. So what will happen in the future? Will we have emerging cabling stocks? We have cabling stock in the Pacific. We have cabling stock of Newfoundland, Iceland, and in the Barents Sea. How will these um, stocks interact? That's the future question. To conclude, there is a strong need for co coordinated scientific research to document, explore, and understand the ocean, uh, ongoing physical oceanographic changes in the Arctic Ocean and adjacent seas. And we have to understand that single nation efforts is insufficient. We need concerted action to accomplish the great task ahead. And we also need to understand the impacts of of these physical changes on the living resources of the ocean. Um, and finally, I think it is of fundamental uh, importance uh, that we develop a more efficient and safe management mechanism uh, under changing environmental conditions. Uh, and I would like to make that to my final word. Thank you. <laughs>